The next day, nobody talked to me and said that I was trying to ruin this person's career. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, oh. that happened. How have these revelations uh, that have come out over the past couple of months affected you both personally and professionally? Personally, it's just been exhausting. Like, I don't find empowerment in it. I've been trying to. I don't know about you guys. Whenever I see a headline, I'm fucking exhausted. Oh. I'm exhausted. Yeah, and for me, I've kind of become numb to it mm -hmm. because it, it's been happening so much, mm -hmm. and it's like victim after victim, and it's like I'm numb, mm -hmm. and I don't really know how to feel anymore. Have you guys been working on sets post Weinstein allegations? Yeah. I kind of have been working literally nonstop since the Harvey Weinstein allegations, since all of them have came out. and on set just to talk about it and talk to people who have worked with them and hearing even more experiences. It's almost like you feel kind of trapped and alone on set. You're like, who do I trust? I don't want to go into that room and, and have a, a meeting with this director about the scene. I don't want to do that. I don't have to do that. And I'm going to say no if I, or I'm going to bring somebody with me. I'm going to stand up for myself, which I think all women need to do. Have you ever felt like you've been punished for being outspoken? I had an instance where I witnessed um, somebody I worked with inappropriately touch somebody else that I worked with who was a minor. Ugh. I reported it privately to yes. our showrunner after the set had wrapped. I found it very disturbing. Mm -hmm. The person who was the person who was touched was obviously disturbed. I talked to the showrunner after set and I said, I do not want my name attached to this because I know how that'll go for me, diva doesn't want to work with anyone, blah, blah, blah. Like, you just no. know how it goes for you. So I just said, I do not want my name to touch this, but this happened, and I want this to be dealt with because I don't feel comfortable witnessing that in the mm -hmm. set. The next day, nobody talked to me and said that I was trying to ruin this person's career. Are you fucking kidding That's me? Horrible. Yeah, that wow. happened. Literally, I felt helpless. It was wow. like, literally, nobody will believe me. And so you feel like you have nowhere to go. You have no one to speak to. Well, I was just like, I did what I'm told to do. I don't know about you guys, or if you had to go to HR meetings on your show. I went to HR meetings on your show. Yeah, sexual harassment and meetings. And like, they tell you the second. <laughs> what are you feeling right now? It's just sad. I'm a big yeah. crier. Do you have like a tissue? Does somebody have a tissue? I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it won't for me, too. Yeah. You just leave them there. <laughs> Do you guys feel the pressure to talk about this kind of stuff? I don't, I don't want people to feel alone in that sense, where it's like it's yeah. a me too, like whoever it is that these people in America and the world and the country and the, and the universe are looking up to, you know, if it's a public figure, I, I, I want them to know that people have been there too and, you know, yeah. I've personally been there and it's not even in a victim statement at all. It's just a fact of like me too and like I've been there and I've yeah. been sexually assaulted twice in the past year and a half. Really? And Jesus I Christ. feel empowered now from it. Yeah. I don't not at this, I mean, yes, at this very moment, but in the past few months. And I haven't even told half of my family and friends that. So that's something that's very vulnerable to me and very, very private to talk about, but I want to talk about it on this because I want people to know, and it wasn't in a work environment. That's something I also want to say, that it's not always going to be in a work environment. Yes, there's so much talk about everything going on in this industry. It's so fucked, it's so bad, it's so gross, and just power abuse, but there's so many other industries that power is being abused in, and I feel like it's getting overlooked, and I think it needs to, I think people need to open their eyes, and I think everybody needs to Even more take a step back. And do you feel like young Hollywood has been left out of this conversation? Yeah. I did feel like the entire sort of time this conversation was happening, there wasn't so much of a check-in with the younger actresses mm -hmm. who've, I've, I mean, I'm sure you guys are just started acting, but you guys have mm -hmm. been around this industry for so long. I started acting when I was five, and like nobody told me that things weren't okay. Also, as young women, we've like, always felt like we had to prove something. Right. Just being in these industries that we are, like it's it's a natural born thing. We always have to go the extra mile to even get the same recognition. Mm -hmm. And for us, you know, that's a given, but we, we that makes us stronger in a way. Right. And I think it, it makes us brave. And I'm so inspired by these women who are speaking out. Does this reckoning have an effect on the way that you will choose projects in the future? I've been reconsidering how much time I want to spend on a set. Wow. And if it's if it's a place where I feel like I feel safe with the crew and I feel safe in the part and I feel confident that what I'm making has some sort of greater effect. Mm -hmm. For me, it's about seeing myself reflected in the crews. I'm trying to pick 
things that are women dominated, right. people of color dominated, because statistically that will protect you more. I worked with Ava DuVernay and she works with incredibly diverse crews that are so, you feel so safe. There's a woman at the head of this. There's a woman doing this part. I know people have my back. And like that, when you have that security, it makes your job that much better because you feel like you can actually do what you're doing and focus on the job and the Fact. work rather than not getting assaulted. <laughs> do you feel like the conversation around Me Too has become kind of an elite white phenomenon? You know, honestly, I don't feel that way. I guess maybe just the way I was brought up, I just saw all women and all men to be equal. Mm -hmm. So when this like Me Too movement came out, I saw women of all colors supporting it. Mm -hmm. And I just felt a part of it, even though I haven't been like, you know, violated in that way, but I felt a part of it, like the, a womanhood. Like from my perspective, I didn't feel like it was just, you know, driven by one race. I, I felt like it was all races of all women. And, you know, even I felt included in a way. So. Absolutely, and whenever women meet each other, like we instantly feel connected. You yeah. know, there's there's similarities within us. So I I I just feel yeah. like we're yeah. all like family. I hope the one thing that this is opening up, especially for white women actresses, because I do feel like they are getting the most visibility mm -hmm. centering around the Me Too conversation, whether it's it's that like they need to, I think, talk more about how not only is this industry sexist, but it's like inherently a white supremacist mm -hmm. industry. And the way that it networks is that, and the way that it works is that, and the pyramid or however you get to the top is double for anybody who's not like a white woman. Are you guys talking to the guys your age about this stuff? Yeah. It's been weird to talk with other young actors about it because they're like, oh, I was just so shocked. The male, like, male actor. Yeah, and I'm like, I fantasize about being shocked. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm immune oh at this point. God. It's like not shocking for me when I wake up. I mean, we talk about this. It's like when you wake up and you see another thing, not shocking at this point. But it is sort of interesting when I've talked to other male actors who are my age about how shocked they are. And I'm like, wow. Is that just, frustrating? Well, it's just like, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. They grow up in a different world. You're not thinking, is that creepy man? Like, I don't want to be alone in a room with him when right. I, I like, there's just so many things that I've caught myself on a set now. Like, shit, I should not be thinking about, is it okay if I like do this? Or if I get my mic pack on, like, Eight years old shouldn't be getting a thigh pack on by a man alone in a room. Right. Yep. Shouldn't. Our father reminded us, he was like, this is why I'm always with you guys, like when we're in studios, because I know what goes down and like, I just want you all to be protected and I, I know what happens. So yeah. that's why I'm always here. I'm always your protector. And he always made that very clear to us. Yeah. Yeah. Are there things that were normalized to you at the beginning that now looking back are very clearly not normal? I think the system of auditioning, because it's inherently usually all men producers, a man director, a man casting director, you're like a young girl going alone into a room of 15 men. That essentially your job is, I'm going to convince you why you should hire me. And it's like that inherent thing mm -hmm. feels so slanted. So that's one of many, 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 many things that I feel like we just constantly, constantly normalize. I have a lot of friends who are young actresses who have felt like they've had to sexualize their bodies or sexualize themselves in a way. To get the part? To get the part, yeah. to, to producers and, and directors and writers and maybe flirt with them. And I try to, uh, it breaks my heart. It's just gross. Yeah, cause like just imagine yourself being put in that position where something you've worked so hard for so long, all of your life, and like you're finally like met that person who can change it all for you and like he'll disrespect you in that way. And I don't, I don't shame any women who don't say anything about it. Yeah. It's not their fault yeah. at all. You know, it's the world that we're living in. It's sad that this is the world we're living in where things have to happen like that for you to just even progress in the field that you want to be successful in and how it comes down to, you know, men sexualizing you and using that to bribe you in a way. Well, it's exactly what you said. It's you and the job that you want. Yeah. And that job's going to change your life. And this person's in the way. And it's a dude. Damn. It's a dude. And how are you? I want my job. So that person's in the way. Guess I have to do whatever I'm supposed to. I'm so glad that you're talking about how like we shouldn't blame people who are not speaking up or who didn't say anything mm -hmm. when they were coerced in things, whether they finally gave in or not. Because it's, it's literally a system that ingrains you to do what you need to do to get the part or to get this job. 
It's a survival technique. 